In high school, you would have learned about rectilinear motion or motion in a straight line. We would talk about situations that may have a constant velocity or a constant acceleration. But what if that velocity is not constantly changing? Well, this is where calculus is going to come really handy. Now, before we start, if you like my videos, please consider buying me a coffee and remember to press the subscribe button and the bell so that you get my latest updates. So let's get started. In high school, you would have learned situations where we either have a constant velocity or a constant acceleration. Now the graphs can be represented this way. And let's look at the three graphs. So let's say we have a situation of displacement versus time. We have our velocity versus time. And then similarly, we also have acceleration versus time. So if the situation is where we have a constant velocity, we will have a graph that looks like this. For the displacement time graph, this. And in this case, because the acceleration is zero, in this case, we have a line that sits right on the x-axis. Now, what about the situation of constant acceleration? Well, we might get a parabola like so, a straight line like so, and in this case, I'd have a constant acceleration like so. But what if I don't have a straight line for the velocity time graph? So let's say I have a situation where my velocity is described like this. In this case, my acceleration is changing. In other words, the slope of the line is changing. Now, this brings us to an important point. That is, the slope of a line for the displacement time graph is the velocity. And the slope of my velocity time graph is the acceleration, constant acceleration and changing acceleration. This just gets us to an understanding of where calculus comes in. See, the slope of a displacement time graph is the derivative of the displacement. In other words, the derivative of our x with respect to time gives us the velocity. So what we say is that the velocity is equal to the derivative of x with respect to time. Similarly speaking, the acceleration of our situation is equal to the slope of my velocity time graph. So in other words, it is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. That also means there's that our acceleration is also equal to the second derivative of x with respect to time. Now, sometimes this can be written in different formats in different texts. So I might, instead of writing this, I might say that the function of v in terms of t is equal to the derivative of my displacement. Similarly speaking, I might write down the acceleration in terms of time is equal to, and just using this term over here, the derivative of the velocity function with respect to time. A third way that it might be represented, we might say is that we have a, and we will put a v dot here to suggest that is the derivative of v, which is also equal to the second derivative of displacement. Now for the remainder of the video, I'm just going to be simply using this format here. So in other words, if we go in this direction, that is what we're doing is looking at the slope of the graphs. We are doing a derivation. But can we go in reverse? Well, you would have learned in high school that the area underneath the graph of a velocity time graph gives us the displacement. Similarly speaking, the area under an acceleration time graph gives us the velocity. And that's, of course, integration. So what we say is that the displacement is equal to the integral of the velocity with respect to time. Similarly speaking, the velocity is equal to the integral of the acceleration with respect to time. Summarizing, that means if we go in this direction, we are looking at the area. And of course, here we are doing an integration. Now that we know that, we are in a position to derive the equations of motion using calculus. Let's start with the equation that the acceleration is equal to the derivative with respect to time of the velocity. Then what we could say is that dv is equal to a dt. We now integrate both sides. So in other words, we say the integral starting from v naught to v of dv is equal to the integral, because we're with respect to time, we start at t naught to t of the acceleration dt. 
Now, what we have here is simply V minus V naught. On the other side, we'll only have this term because this is actually the value of zero. And so what we end up getting is a T. As a result, we get our equation of motion being V is equal to V naught plus a T. Let's look at the second equation of motion. And what we start by saying is that a velocity is equal to the derivative of the displacement with respect to time. So again, I rearrange this and I say dx is equal to v dt. But this is, of course, v, which is going to be v naught plus a t dt. What I now do is I integrate both sides and I say the integral from x naught to x of dx is equal to the integral of v naught plus a t from zero to t dt. Now this just becomes x minus x naught. On this side, again, because we have zero, the integral of this becomes zero. And so all we have to worry about is the t. So what we end up getting is v naught t plus a half a t squared. Cleaning that up, we get x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus a half a t squared. So there is our second equation of motion. Let's write it down over here. Now, often what happens is because we're interested in the change of displacement, often what you'll see is just the x here and the x naught disappears because the x just represents the change in the displacement. So now let's look at the third equation of motion. And we start off by saying that we have dv with respect to dx. Now, this doesn't actually mean anything, but what we're going to do is actually multiply this by one. Now, what am I doing? I'm actually going to multiply it by dt over dt. So what I end up getting is dv dx multiplied by dt over dt. Now that means I can rearrange this. So now what I have is dv dt multiplied by dt dx. Now, what does that mean? Well, this is acceleration. So I can just write down like acceleration. And this is the inverse of velocity. So I have multiplied by one over v. So this dv dx is actually acceleration times one over v. I now go to take that and that and rearrange it. And what I get is this v dv is equal to a dx. I now integrate both sides. So I'm going to go to the integral from v naught to v of v dv and then integrate a dx from x naught to x. Now, if I integrate this, what I end up getting is this. I get v squared minus v naught squared all over 2. And on this side, I get a multiplied by x minus x naught. Finally, I get this. I get v squared minus v naught squared is equal to 2a multiplied by x minus x naught. And therefore, I get v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a x minus x naught. Now, again, often what you'll have is our x naught is a zero value. In other words, we have our change in displacement for the scenario. And so what we end up getting is just v squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax. And so here is our final equation of motion. So now what we've done is we have derived the equations of motion using calculus. But remember, all of these situations are dealing with situations where the acceleration is constant. But what about situations where the acceleration is not constant, where it is constantly changing? And that leads to the concept of jerk. But that's in my next video, so watch out for that. So I hope that has been helpful for you with a calculus of rectilinear motion. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and consider buying me a coffee if this has been helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.